Hey guys, today I want to talk about the IAC driver, which is a driver that Mac has to deal with uh, MIDI routing. Um, that might, might sound a little bit boring, so um, let's use a practical example to demonstrate that. What I want to do is I want to use an LFO, a Logic MIDI LFO inside the modulator effects to modulate an equalizer. So I want to set that LFO to uh, one of these bands and make it sort of do this automatically. As you know, we cannot do that with the regular modulator because the modulators only stream into the uh, synthesizer. So if I have a synthesizer right here, I can MIDI learn it with that LFO, but uh, for the plugins, all that stuff really doesn't work. So what we have to do is we have to make a, a global LFO. We have to make that LFO into something that Logic sees as an external source. And to do that, we use an IAC driver and we send it to that driver and then we can import it back into Logic and Logic will treat it really as a, a separate LFO or as a separate keyboard or somebody, uh, the same like turning a mod wheel on a keyboard. Um, that's how it will sort of see that LFO, just as MIDI messages. So the first step we need to do is we set up a, a new external MIDI track and we select use external instrument plugin. And then we get this right here and I'll drag it down a little bit. Um, and I have some other track right here that basically does the same because this is my template, uh, but I wanna start fresh for this one. And now we uh, open our MIDI effects right here. Uh, let's choose a modulator and Let's choose an LFO and I'll set it to a new channel that I haven't used. And we can close that for now. And then we open the external instrument plugin. And this right now says nothing. MIDI destination is nothing. MIDI channel is nothing. Input is nothing. So this is going to do nothing. The first step we need to do is we need to visit our IAC driver. And this one is located in our audio MIDI setup. And if you don't have that in your dock like me, you can go to the applications and you can go to utilities and there will be the audio MIDI setup. And if you only see this audio window, you just have to go to window and then um, you click show MIDI window. And right now I already have a new configuration here. Um, you can see live, but normally it will probably be on untitled and it will just be your plain, your plain settings. Um, so we're going to work with this for right now. And this here is your IAC driver. And if I double click it, I can um, make new ports. I can rename it. And this is what I already did for my other, for my other setup. So if I go to that one, um, you can see that I've named the IAC driver and you can see that I have some buses set up. So let's open a new bus here, a new port, I should say. And to do that, we click the plus icon and it will give us a bus right there, which we can double click and then rename tutorial bus. And this is the same like an arcs would work in uh, Logic. It's just a place that you can send stuff to. And that's exactly what we want. So we have that, uh, we can close this window. And now if I go to that same external instrument plugin, I should see my uh, bus as a destination there. I see driver your tutorial bus. That's the one we want. So we select that and then we can select a channel. Um, we have up to 60 MIDI channels. Um, you could choose one, but normally to be safe, I choose a channel that is not, that you're sure of that it's, it, it's free. So I'll choose 12. And that's all we have to do right now. So now if I'm, um, if I'm playing my Logic project, um, it's also sending this LFO to that driver. So it's now in the computer. So the next step is we need to get it back into Logic again. And to do that, we have to visit our MIDI environment. And if we are in our MIDI environment, there uh, are uh, wide possibilities of windows that could open, like this mixer window could open, which still looks like Logic 9, this MIDI instrument window. Um, but you have to be at the clicks and port layers. And for me, I already made a custom setup right here. So the click, clicks and ports layer, um, I called this setup. Um, but you need to have this device right here on the left side, which is called the physical input. And if you don't see it anywhere, you can go to new and then physical input somewhere here. 
there it is. Um, and this physical input, you can only have one of these in your environment. And this is all the inputs that get into logic. Whenever you have a MIDI keyboard and it's not working, it's probably because it's not connected to the sequencer right here. So I have all this stuff right here, um, which I made. I'm going to explain that some other day. You only need these two, the sequencer input and the physical input. So physical input is from the computer to logic and sequencer input is from the environment into the sequencer, which is just your main, your main window that you normally work in. Um, and I can see here my IAC driver, your tutorial bus, and I can see some other ports. I can see my keyboards, I can see um, my nano controller, and I can see SUM. SUM is everything. If you're not sure of which port to use, you can always use SUM. But keep in mind that it will send all signals. So you might have overlapping MIDI messages and stuff like that. Um, so to be safe, I'm going to choose just my your bus. And I'm going to plug it. I'm going to drag a cable and I plug it into the sequencer input. So now let's try to play Logic. And we can see in the MIDI input window right here that it's receiving some MIDI. It says channel 12, uh, which we have selected, and then it thinks we are playing MIDI notes, uh, which we are not, but that's fine for now. So this is all working, and another way to check on this is to open a monitor object, which we can find here as well. We got a new monitor, and I'll probably do a decent tutorial about this uh, someday soon, about the whole environment. Um, but we can also plug the cable right into that monitor, and we can already see the messages right here. And this is pretty useful because now you can, uh, if, if you see those messages, you can change them, um, which, is, which is something that I'll, I'll get into later. Um, and we plug that monitor into the sequencer input. So now we have that going, uh, we can go to our, uh, to our one node synth channel. And since this is just sending regular MIDI, we can now uh, just MIDI learn, pressing Command uh, L. And you can see that it has learned my, um, my equalizer band. Now to scale this, because it's going way too extreme, we open the modulator again, so our LFO, and we'll make sure the channel is selected so it receives that MIDI input. And we can offset it, and we can set the output level a bit lower. So we have very precise control here over our band. And we can change the LFO shape. We can sync it, of course. And if we don't need it anymore, we can just simply switch it off. So that's the very basics of the IAC driver and uh, why you should get into it and uh, start messing around with it. It's really fun because you can assign multiple LFOs to multiple uh, equalizers and make these complex filter setups. Um, there's more to the environment window than just this. Um, I'll try to explain all the other stuff um, in another video and make some uh, make some tutorials about uh, a whole a whole overview over the environment. But for now, this should get you started and just have some fun.